Uh, welcome to SO36 Berlin, where I have a band called Hideous Divinity with me. First of all, welcome to Berlin. Okay. And for beginning, uh, could you tell us a little about a band called uh, Hideous Divinity? Okay, so, well, Hideous Divinity, Hideous Divinity was officially born in 2007, when it basically was only me, after I left World of Penance. And, well, there was no true lineup until 2010. So I, I would say it's fair to say that the band was born in 2010. Since then we released three albums with the, uh, under the label, the Californian label Unique Leader. We are right now promoting our last album called Advenience. Uh, we got the immense luck to be part of this amazing tour hell over Europe. Hell on Earth was that. I don't know. Uh, together with cattle decapitation, broken hope, and we we couldn't have hoped about a say, better circumstance to promote our new album. Things are going are going great, and uh, it's me playing the guitar, Enrico H. Di Lorenzo next to me on the vocals, Giulio Galati on the drums, two more band members, Stefano Franceschini playing bass, and uh, for this tour we have uh, say. Um, I don't want to call it a replacement because he's a fantastic guitarist and a great guy. Ricardo Benedini is for us only for this tour and he plays the other guitar. Uh, as said, you are part of Hell on Earth tour that has been going around Europe for almost a month now. How has the tour been for you guys? So far it's very, very good. And, you know, almost as always, just during the last days, you can link strongly with the other bandmates of the, the other bands because first weeks everyone has to just handle its own spaces and stuff, see how the tour is going, you know. And by the way, it has been really, really good. I think all the bands are really amazing. I never saw live, for example, Cattle Decapitation and Broken Hope. I'm a huge fan of their music, so it's a nice chance also to uh, see them performing every night and just remaining astonished by their very, very good execution. And also, the first band are quite young kids, but they yeah. know just how to do the, you know, their job. They're actually very good. The band name is Gloria Guillotine. And so, yeah. Uh, yeah, you guys have been in the scene for a long time already. Uh, how important are live performances for you? I think that uh, for uh, a death metal band, but actually for every band, there are two lives. The studio one, that is what you're going to live uh, in the centuries if you are lucky. And uh, the live performance, that is uh, another kind of set, is uh, another dimension completely. It's probably the one in which you can actually feeling and touch the, the people, your fans, the people attending. And it's a completely different set, but it's probably the, the, the one in which you are forced to push everything out. You are forced to have a strong link with the other members of the band. You are forced to build quickly a huge link with the audience. And you have to have a massive gang bang in the name of death metal. And it's amazing, actually. <laughs> so it's really important. We work hard on it. There's a lot of job that you can't actually see when you see uh, everybody's show but i can talk for us there's more more long more than what you can see in our show in about preparing from the movements the music the state of mind it's a really an important moment for a band so we have to have everything perfect that's our way at least okay and you have described your style of uh, death metal as unholy death metal uh, how would you describe your style in your own words? It's funny because I think I came out with the unholy death metal a long time ago. 
and it's funny because uh, it has something to do with uh, German friends. They had this uh, webzine back in the days. I don't know if it still exists. It was called Unholy Terror. And the main bands they were focusing on were the bands that I was also worshipping, like uh, Incantation, Immolation, a bit of all the bands ending with Asian. You basically can't fail. Um, I don't know. I think it still works, especially for the last album, because we personally, doing the songwriting, I had a lot of influences from uh, unconventional death metal sounds. I always liked black metal, and I I fell in love with the latest way of wave of extremely dark, obscure death slash black metal bands like uh, Aklis, Adversarial my personal favorite band at the moment which is inquisition which is a black metal duo but think about that they are just two and they don't need anything else they're just amazing amazing because right now death metal it can't get any faster it can't get any more technical so let's let's look at another side of it how to make it more obscure how to make it more scary <clears throat> All these bands that released the albums between 2015 to, to now, they created something new. I didn't think it was possible to create something almost entirely new, say, a good 30 years after death metal was born. And we are just taking benefits of all these bands. So I'm proud to say I'm trying to make my death metal small addition to mankind the honoliest as possible. Okay, uh, the band was founded in 2007, and your debut album Obeisance Rising came out in uh, 2012. How were the early years of the band like? It's a very short one. Yeah. Uh, well, the early years it was basically me living in Norway trying to find someone to play with. But I was, you know, Italian guy, dressing casual, short hair, no one will give me a chance in Norway. But I decided to maintain the fact that Idus Divinity was an Italian slash Norwegian death metal band. So everyone would be like, oh, Norwegian death metal band. This must be cool. I, I lied. I can say it in front of the camera. So um, I made a demo at the time. It was me and two session musicians. It was only two songs. It catched the attention of Unique Leader at the time. But Edis Divinity became a band when there was a lineup. So when I met Enrico, when at the time I met bass guitar, a drummer, and uh, another guitar player. So I would say that those were the embryo years when I was just trying to uh, to understand what to do. Because during those years there was a huge growth, especially in the Italian death metal scene. So all of a sudden the competition was massive. And I knew I had to do something more. I tried with all my all my power. I have something to add. Actually, in those years, when I listened to that demo, I thought to myself, lovely, but I could do better. And here I am. <laughs> uh, you mentioned your new album, uh, Advenience. Uh, it was published uh, earlier this year. Uh, how would you describe the album in your own words? The drummer is the most important thing. <laughs> yeah, even if I think, I don't know. Every one of us should be say something uh, about this question. Uh, what to say? We put really a lot of efforts in it, just in the writing session, the recording session, all the mix and mastering, you know, periods. We basically lived in the studio. I think it's, I don't know, not only because I play drums in the CD, but to me is the best record for Idios Divinity to now. I think yes. also the other guys shared the same idea. And I don't know, concerning the everything, sound, songwriting, lyrics, the production. the ideas production, yes, yeah, Stefano, the, the guy that owns the 16th, 16th Cellar Studio in Rome, he is a great genius and constant I would say, uh, man of, sh of science <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. in his it's work, you know. It's yeah, he's a scientist. He just keeps studying and increasing his knowledge. And you can really hear his hard work in every uh, record he does, he products. And I don't know, 
best CD of the band and maybe best production of his career, but my personal thought. So. With this album, we tried, um, we tried to push harder on every aspect. Uh, with Advenians, from the lyrical point of view, we try to analyze the role of the artist and of death metal in the modern society and in the development of history from the past to the future. We are not so weird. We have based our lyrical work on uh, of Advenians on Videodrome and on the work of uh, Benjamin. And their reflection of the media becoming flesh and becoming art and becoming word and becoming history uh, made us think about what is our role in this are we are we improving or are we destroying are we developing the future from the past or will taking back the future in the past it's hard to say it's all, of course only questions we mm, do not want to give answer. We can't give answer. We just can make questions. And advenience is our biggest question. To be true to this point of view, with Stefano uh, Morabito, we tried to find also the sound that could be uh, as sketchy as possible and as disturbing as possible. We wanted to have a, a, a sort of cup of magos that was tasty. It's pretty impossible, but I, I think uh, he did it from <laughs> a certain a point of view. <laughs> yeah, so we are, um, if, we are, if we have to describe it, we don't like all the label that um, usually they give us technical death metal, brutal death metal, uh, progressive death metal. Come on, it's death metal. With many influences, but... With all the influence that every every one of us has, but uh, it's death metal. It's what we're looking for. If uh, what spawns off of, of it, well, we'll take it. But it's death metal. It's simple. Regarding the influences, influences are basically uh, well, what you decide, what you find. Uh, there was a review, a guy that said that this record will remind uh, him of uh, a band called a band from Germany called Sulfur Aeon. I was so happy about that because they were one of my greatest influences for this record and it was not obvious they reminded to that particular genre which is I mean I could not simply do copy and paste of the riffs or their atmospheres as well as I couldn't do copy and paste of a black metal band even if I worship because the result will be so plastic plastic made so uh, yeah it's well Nothing else to add, but uh, influences are basically what you see in it. We started trying to copy some band and now we took some distance from them. Also because I think everybody else is doing that. And they're doing even better than us. Why to persevere in a strategy that is not winning strategy anymore? Okay, and a uh, new album out and you are touring, everything... Uh uh, sounds like very exciting. Uh, how do you see the future of the band? <laughs> the future is... Julia said that this is our best album so far and that's pretty... Excuse me, it's pretty obvious because otherwise there won't be a next album. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I got your point. Of, of course it is. What do I mean by this? Um, I'm already working on some ideas, doing some brainstorming, and, and it's the worst time of my life because I have to find something that will have to beat, by definition, opinions. So, yeah, uh, I see a new record, uh, hopefully based, uh, the concept based on another movie, but it will have to be something, uh, uh, say, one step ahead because... Uh, Obesions Rising, the first record was about movie, John Carpenter's They Live, Cobra Verde was about Werner Herzog, Cobra Verde, and this last one, Advenience, was actually a mix between a philosophical source and a, and a cinema source. So I'll have to step up. Regarding the everything else, well, we I think we're enjoying touring, touring is cool, yeah. playing each and every day a different city in Europe. It has been great with Cannibal Corpse one year ago, together with Cannibal Corpse and Christian. It, uh, it's been great this time. 
to the US, for example. That would be great. We are facing some bureaucracy problems, but I really hope in the future we can make it because it's a, it's a big market. We have many fans in there. Will be will be great. Like, really. What you want to do? Nothing to add. I hope I'm still alive in two years. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just step by step. Yeah. Just I just can say that we will try our best. Our best. I mean, for the point that concerns, you know, considering the best album. Yeah, it's obvious. Maybe for us, but not for every. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. For example, I, I consider still mm, Obeisance Rising a, an amazing product. And even if Advanced to me is better, I think our, it's something different, you know? From the production point of view, the, um, the riffs, the, the ideas and many stuff. Uh, musically speaking, we'll keep going into the direction that Rico described so this kind of death metal with more obscure influences. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay. Thank you very much, guys, and break a leg tonight. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.